couple were driving along a mountain road when suddenly a child appeared in front of their car. The man panicked and hit the brakes, but as the car came to a stop, the child was gone. When they looked out the windscreen, they saw a cliff sitting right before them. If they hadn't braked, they would have driven over the edge. That child was a kind spirit who was trying to help us, the woman said. Then they heard a voice from the back of the car. I was hoping you would fall. Hey guys, I'm your host, Tara A. Devlin, and welcome to another episode of Koobana, True Japanese Scary Stories from Around the Internet. Before we start this week, I have a small announcement. One of my stories has been selected for an upcoming anthology titled A Call for Chaos. The theme of this book is set around hospitals and other medical facilities, so if medical horror is your thing, please feel free to check it out. The book comes out on November 4, and you can pre order it at the special price of just 99 cents on Amazon right now. You can find that link in this week's episode notes. Or directly on koobana.net. Now, on this week's episode, we're going to be rounding out Origins Month with a healthy sampling of various creepypastas from the early years. The last mixed episode we did of short stories received quite a lot of positive feedback, so we're back again with another random selection to whet your appetite. All of these stories are from the turn of the century when online Japanese creepypastas were just starting to find their footing. So sit back and enjoy a selection of hand-picked classic tales. First up this week is... Night Watchman. A freelance writer heard about an abandoned factory that was supposedly haunted so he went to stay the night for research. He arrived as night fell, and the place did indeed give off a haunted air. But there was a middle-aged guard at the gate. Why would an abandoned factory need a night guard? There had to be something inside, he thought. Um, I'd like to stay the night for research. Research? What are you on about? Somebody died in there. Don't be stupid. You don't understand. This is for my job, and I'd really like to stay the night. If you want to talk about jobs, it's my job to stop people from going inside. Give up. Go home. No, but... It doesn't matter what you say. The answer is no. If you go inside, you'll be cursed. The rider got chills down his spine at the word cursed. But he was a professional. He pretended to go home and then climbed over the fence where the night watchman couldn't see him. He went inside. He entered through a storehouse, but something felt strange. Why was there a picture hanging on the wall in a storehouse? It looks like a portrait, but it was dark so he couldn't see very well. I'll check in the morning, he thought, but then he heard footsteps. Thinking it was the night watchman, he hid behind a desk inside the room. Perhaps the guard found something suspicious, but he circled the area several times before finally leaving. Relieved, the rider stepped out from the desk and saw something moving above his head. Thinking it was actually a ghost, he soon realized it was a rope hanging from a beam above him. The man sat down and pulled out some liquor he brought with him feeling somewhat let down. He continued his research throughout the night, and as the sun came up in the morning, 
He went to check the picture on the wall. There was a small plate beneath it. Nanny 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 Corporation, fourth company president. That wasn't a ghost. Huh. He was frightened over nothing, and he found nothing for his research. He was about to leave when he remembered what the night watchman told him the night before. Somebody died in there. He thought he should at least ask the morning guard about it, and returned the way he entered. He went back to the guard waiting by the front gate. Excuse me, I'm from XXX Magazine. I heard that somebody died inside this building, and that their ghost still haunts the area. If at all possible, I'd like to go inside to gather some information, if that's okay with you. Ah, you're writing about that. Well, sure. That was my colleague. He loved his family and had a very strong sense of responsibility. On the day his first grandchild was born, he left the factory for just 30 minutes to go and see him at the hospital. But in those 30 minutes, the factory was robbed. Some expensive rare metals or something. They took everything. The company had to lay all their workers off, and one guy committed suicide with his entire family. My colleague really took that to heart, and in the end, he hung himself. You can't see it from here, but there's a storehouse back there. He threw a rope over one of the beams and... Hang on, where did you hear this story? From the Night Watchman. Huh? But we don't have a Night Watchman. Hey Mom, have you seen my mug? What do you mean, look in the cupboard above the sink? Why would it be up there? You know I can't reach that high. Oh, whatever. It's too early for this. I need my coffee. I need my... You know what? Never mind. I'll just get a new mug. I don't need that one anymore. If you're looking for exclusive Kowabana or Japanese horror merchandise, head over to kowabana.threadless.com right now. We've got mugs, t-shirts, phone cases, bags, and much more. And we're adding new designs all the time. Don't let angry spirits claim your stuff as their own. Head over to the Koabana Threadless store right now. Next up is a warning about the beach. It might seem fun, but be careful. You might not be the only thing in the water. This one's called... Commemoration Photo. Four elementary school students went to the beach to play. First, they went to the public bath, but once they got tired of that, they moved to an empty rock wall area to mess around. They enjoyed themselves greatly and decided to take a photo together before they went home to remember the day. But they didn't want to take any old photo. That would be boring. Instead, they decided they would dive under the water and then, on the count of three, jump back up into the air. That way, it would be funny because their hair would be stuck to their face and such. It was time to take the photo. The boys lined up in the water and then dove under at the same time. On three, they jumped and took the photo, but for some reason, the boy in the middle didn't surface. 
Hey, what are you doing? His friends said. They thought he was playing a joke, so they started looking for him. But no matter where they looked, they couldn't find him. In the end, the sea rescue team was called in to find him, and the boy's dead body was eventually found washed up on another coast. His family was of course sad, but then they remembered the photo. Perhaps, just perhaps, they would be able to see their boy one final time. It was the last evidence remaining of him on Earth. The boy's mother asked to see the photo, but the other boys didn't want to show her. She pleaded with them. It was her only chance to see her boy one last time. She pleaded so fervently that they finally relented. The two boys were in the air, on either side of him. But in between them, where her son should have been, was an old woman they had never seen before. She was pushing the boy's head down underwater. Japanese ghosts love water. It's how they travel between worlds, and where they love to congregate when stuck in this one. But it's not always the ghosts you have to fear. Find out why in Don't Drop Me This Time. A young woman got pregnant, and after much discussion with her boyfriend over whether to keep the baby or not, they decided she should give birth. But the couple were young and unable to raise a child, so after further discussions, they decided to kill it. The pair went to a lake in the middle of the night and climbed into a boat. They rowed out into the middle. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the woman said over and over. They dropped the baby over the edge. Several years passed and the young couple finally got married. The woman gave birth to a healthy baby girl and they all lived happily together. One day, when the girl was four, she pestered her parents to take her to the lake. The father didn't want to go, but she continued to pester him, and finally, he relented. When the family reached the lake, the girl pointed to a boat and said, Daddy, I want to ride that. Again she was persistent, and unwillingly, the father borrowed the boat and took them out to the middle of the lake. Daddy, I need to pee, the little girl said. The father looked around to see if anyone was watching and decided to let the girl go in the water. Firmly holding his daughter, the father joined her in the water. The little girl then turned to look at him. Don't drop me this time, okay? You know what else Japanese ghosts love? Mountains. Japan is a mountainous country with lots of steep, dangerous roads. It's not uncommon to find that some of them are haunted by those who have died in horrific accidents, like in this next story. This one's called... It's Not You. One night, businessman A-san was working late, so he caught a taxi home. He enjoyed some friendly conversation with the driver as they drove. Then the taxi entered a dark mountain road. The side of the road was filled with dense forest, and there were no other cars in sight. The driver's expression changed, and he spoke to A-san 
with a dark look on his face. Listen to me very closely. From here on out, you mustn't look out your window. Not even once. Asan, confused by the driver's sudden change, could do nothing but say, Okay. The taxi drove through the dark forest, but finding the situation strange, Asan spoke to the driver again. Um, why can't I look outside? But the driver showed no reaction and said nothing. Asan grew even more fearful. Then, uh, uh, he heard a noise outside his window. The window he'd just been told not to look out. What is that? Asan wondered, and before he could stop himself, he looked at the window. There was a man there, an angry expression suddenly taking over his features. It's not you, he said, looking directly at Asan. Asan had no memory of what happened after that. Apparently, a man was hit and killed on that mountain road several years earlier, and the culprit was never caught. And so, the man's ghost spends night after night checking each vehicle that drives by, looking for the man who killed him. This next story is about the power of love, but also a warning about when those feelings go too far. This one's called His Footsteps. Keiko was in a long-distance relationship with her boyfriend. They were from the same hometown, but while they were at university, they were only able to see each other during the holidays. During the summer holidays of her fourth year, Keiko went home towards the end of July, and her boyfriend planned to return at the start of August. When she got back, Keiko called him every day. I miss you. Mm, I'll be back as soon as I'm free, he replied. But August rolled around, and there was no sign of him. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. Looks like I'm going to be a little late, he said. Keiko was, of course, upset and asked why. He told her he was busy with work and research. Keiko could do nothing but reluctantly wait, and she continued to call him every day. But on August 8th, she suddenly received a phone call from his parents. Apparently, he had died towards the end of July. He was playing guitar alone in his room when he had a heart attack. But everyone had gone home for the holidays. It wasn't until someone noticed a bad smell that they realized he was dead. But I've been speaking to him on the phone. Keiko was so terrified and anxious that she broke down and was admitted to the hospital. On the night of August 14th, she noticed something was odd about her room. The atmosphere was different to usual. The air was warm and she couldn't move. Finding it strange, the air then started to vibrate. She instantly knew they were her boyfriend's footsteps. 
yet she wasn't scared. She waited quietly for him to appear. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm here now. He stood before her exactly as he had appeared in life. Oh, I'm happy you came to see me, but you're dead. You can't be here. Keiko complained with all her might. Don't be stupid. If I can't come to see you during Obon, then when can I? Keiko froze with fear. Next year. And the year after that. And the year after that. I'll come to see you. Forever. Until it's your turn to come and visit me. Be careful when walking through the forests of Japan. You never know what you might stumble across. Or whether it was ever really there to begin with. Find out what happens in this next story called The Hanging Suicide. A man heard about a mountain path where ghosts were supposed to appear. So one day, he went to take a look for himself. When he got there, he saw what looked like a person floating amongst the leaves. Oh, no way! A ghost? For real? He thought. But as he got closer, he realised it wasn't a ghost, but a man hanging from a tree branch. The man had committed suicide. He thought leaving him there would be a little sad, so he approached the man to bring him down. He heard a loud noise. Surprised, he realised it was just the man's shoe falling to the ground. But he had to get him down, so he reached his hand out towards the rope. But no matter where he stood, he wasn't able to reach it very well. He moved around to the front of the body, but he just couldn't reach it, no matter what he did. Then he heard it again. Huh? He thought. He looked down and saw there was nothing underneath the man's body. When he looked at the body hanging from the tree, the man was still wearing both his shoes. Creeped out, he went to leave the area. But as he was walking away, he realised something. He walked around the man several times trying to get him down, but for some reason, he was unable to picture his face. In fact, despite standing in front of the man several times, all he ever saw was his back. We've featured a lot of stories on Koobana that revolve around Kimo Dameshi, the tests of courage. This next story is no different, and as you can probably already guess, the test doesn't end up going so well. Find out what happens in Hammer. I used to be the captain of a certain club in high school. Each year, we had a tradition where the new members would be forced to go through Kimodameshi, a test of courage. When it was my turn to organise it as club captain, I chose an abandoned house where a murder had taken place a year earlier. There were three new members. We went to the abandoned house in the middle of the night, and the new guys were to go in, one by one, and take a badge we had left inside for them. The first guy went in. We waited. And waited. But he didn't return. So we sent the next guy in to look for him. 
but he didn't come back either. Finally, we sent in the third guy. He was physically the strongest, so we had high hopes for him to return. But he didn't come back either. It was possible that someone had an accident inside, so the entire team went in to find them. But no matter how hard we looked, we couldn't find any of the new guys. Then, I heard a noise coming from above. It was faint, but I could most definitely hear it. Scared, I approached the sound. It was coming from the roof. I opened the window and climbed out. The third guy we sent in was there. He looked lost, muttering something incomprehensible as he hit the roof with a dirty hammer. I called out to him, but he didn't respond. I called the other club members over, and we got him down from the roof and took him to the hospital, but he soon passed away. We continued looking for the other two members, but they were nowhere to be found. And thanks to what happened, our club was abolished. After that, each year on the day of the Kimodameshi, one member of the club would inevitably go crazy and then die. They would all mutter something incomprehensible while hitting the ground with a hammer. Then they would die. Tomorrow is the day of the test. I'm the only one left. Our last story for this week is about a cameraman who goes to Africa for a photo shoot, but ends up capturing more than he expected. This one's called Suicide Photo. This is a story I heard happen to a particular cameraman. The cameraman, an American, went to a lake in South Africa to shoot a photo book with a model. The area in front of the lake was flat, but there was a rather steep cliff behind it. The cameraman used that cliff as their backdrop and started taking photos. With the lake and the cliff in the background, the cameraman pressed the shutter button over and over. But then, Suddenly, he saw a person in his viewfinder falling into the lake. Panicking, the cameraman ran towards the lake, taking photos the whole time. Of course, the rest of the photo shoot was cancelled. They quickly called the police, but they were unable to save the person who fell into the water. The person had thrown themselves from the top of the cliff. It was a suicide. According to the police, the area was a well-known local suicide spot. The model was shocked, but they were somehow able to finish the shoot and then return home to America. After that, several weeks passed. The man in charge at the publisher had heard nothing from the cameraman even though the photos should have already been developed. Becoming impatient, he called the cameraman. I'd like you to cancel this shoot, the cameraman said. You already went all the way to South Africa. We can't do that. Tell me what's really going on. The man in charge tried to get the reason out of the cameraman but he refused to talk. He had heard the cameraman manage to capture a suicide on film, entirely by chance. 
but not getting anything out of him on the phone, the man decided to go and visit his office and ask him directly. The cameraman met him at the door and his exhaustion was plain on his face. When the man questioned him, he said, Okay, look at the photos. Then you can decide what you want to do about them. The cameraman handed him a bundle of photos, and he went through them, one by one. The lake was in the background, behind the model. It was a beautiful lake, and the cliff behind it was gorgeous as well. But one photo in particular made him stop. There was a person in the top right corner, falling through the air. Ah, is this the person? But if this is all, well, it's no big deal. The photos continued. The person approached the water closer and closer with each shot. Finally, he turned to the photo where the person was about to hit the water. He let out a scream and felt his knees go weak. What he saw in the photo he held in his hands was countless arms all reaching up out of the lake. And that brings us to the end of this week's episode. If you enjoyed these stories and want even more, don't forget you can pick up Koabana Origins on Amazon. And if you'd like to follow us on social media, you can find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Patreon at Tara A. Devlin. Our Patreon also offers early access and bonus episodes. So if you'd like even more Japanese horror, head over to patreon.com slash Tara A. Devlin and help support the show. Thanks guys, and I'll see you again next time for even more Koabana, true Japanese scary stories from around the internet. Want even more scary stories? Head over to koabana.net for new translations every week. You can also join our Patreon for exclusive stories you won't find anywhere else. Head over to koabana.net now.